Three weeks ago, Courtney and I started an eBay store from scratch. Our goal is to generate enough sales so Courtney can make $450 profit per week, which will allow her to quit her part-time job as a barista. All right, guys, we've got a pretty big episode ahead today. I'm shooting over to Courtney's place now. We're just gonna jump into her weekly sales figures. Hopefully, she's been able to make a few sales. I'm gonna shoot out and do some thrifting as well to try and find some really good items to put up for sale into her store. And I'm also gonna give away her secret weapon for success on eBay. She's been doing this for the past week, and I think it's been working pretty well for her, so stick around for that. And I also wanna teach you guys how to build a really effective title for your eBay listings. That's actually one of the most important steps that a lot of people neglect. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to build it correctly in this video today. So massive episode. Let's get over to Courtney's now. We'll dive into those numbers. Good morning. Welcome to week three. <laughs> there she is. You're making the plenty of sales, I see. Yeah. Like a lot. I think eight. You've had a really good week. Yeah. Well, let's jump into these numbers. So these numbers were really pleasing to see. Courtney was able to achieve $215.90 in total revenue for week three. It was also a total of nine sales. And when you compare that to weeks one and two, she was only able to do $43 last week. So this was a really significant jump in total sales. And the other thing that I really enjoyed seeing was that her average sale price sat at $24 which was actually double what it was in weeks one and two when it sat at just $12. Courtney's next goal is to become a top rated seller on eBay. She needs to do $1,000 in revenue, 100 transactions, and she needs to be on eBay for 90 days. So this one shouldn't be too far away. So three weeks in, it's really cool to see Courtney now making some pretty consistent sales. What I wanted to touch on now is just the top three sales that Courtney had throughout the week. And this was the first one, wasn't it? Yeah, Hardy Boys. Adventures, uh, the six books. Six books set, and we picked this up in a thrift store in, I think it was the first episode. Yeah. Day yeah. one of this series, we bought these books in a thrift store and we paid, how much was it? Five bucks. Five dollars, yeah, five dollars, and it's gone on to sell for forty-five dollars. The next sale, what, what was that one? The uh, Asics. The Asics, the footy boots. So we picked these up in last week's episode. Mm. What are the numbers around that one? We bought them for five, five dollars, and then sold them with a ten percent coupon as well for forty nine fifty. With the fees and postage, it was a twenty eight thirty profit. Twenty eight dollars in profit for a pair of footy boots in one week. So in one week, but yeah, we bought them in last episode. So the fact that we've turned them around in just six days, so I always talk about it on my channel a lot in the sense of buying football boots. If you can get them for five to ten dollars, you're always going to make a bit of profit. And then the other one as well, the third best sale. What was that one? We brought, I brought it for 15, which was quite high. Um, sold with a 10% coupon as well for 35 99 36 And fees and postage, it was uh, only $5.80 profit. Only $5 profit. So that's a really important one that I wanted to put in there. Well, it was a really attractive sale price of $36. We bought it in a thrift store in week one. I think it was the same day that we actually yeah, bought these. Same shop, yeah. Same shop, same day. They both turned around quickly, but the profit is very, very different. Um, so that's why having a spreadsheet like Courtney's got set up, it's a really good indicator to show. And using the eProfit app as well on your phone, when you're outsourcing, it's a really good way to kind of get a gauge on what your item's actually gonna make you from a net profit perspective. While it was a $36 sale price, it only made Courtney, what, $6 in profit because she had to pay $15 to get her hands on it. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to put that one in there, even though it wasn't the best net result, it was the third best revenue result. And it was a really important lesson in there as well. Yeah. With the posts now out of the way, it was now time to go and try and find some really profitable items in these local thrift stores. We're gonna be aiming for a $40 average sale price, similar to what we were able to do last week. Fingers crossed, today can be just as good. There's a hiding, there's some Barbie books in there. I don't know if that'd be any good. They could be all right. Nothing on it. Surprise me, there's a Del Toro there. They said it was um, a guppe. It's a guppe. We're back. We had a really good run here last week, so we're gonna go back in and hope to do the same. Yeah. 
These are 20 cents. Yeah. These are, I think, pretty good, but I don't think there's many of them. Damn brown. And there's like heaps. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's another damn brown. There's two. For postage. There's another damn brown. This one. That's a good one. Yeah. There you go. Is that those? I think it might be. You got that one too. You want that one? Take that. I can guarantee. I can guarantee that one. Fifteen. The. Do you reckon they'd with them? Um, yeah, I think just obviously document it with the photos. Yeah. Um, but that's the right set of three, isn't it? Yeah, it was. Is it 80 cents? Yeah, I'll go get them. Alright, well, let's give it $30 value. Or and then, 60 cents. And then we'll give the other one $15 worth of value. So our tally of fines is up to $45 in value. Average sale price twenty two fifty. Yeah. That means we've got some work to do. The Rolling Stones. Surely the stones are worth something. Is that DVD? Yeah, it's DVD. Rolling Stones just for the record. Mm. Nah. Not enough. Pokers. That's what you want to be finding. I oh, like a leather top. Good soles. Twelve dollars fifty. Well, that's the issue. If you hold on to that, I don't actually know what size they are. See how the tongue's been removed or the um the fade. But I want to get them though. But I just don't know how to size them up. The Dave Allen show. Oh, that's good. 18, 19, 50. $2. And it's just $2. Right, this one. Discs here in there? Tape on it. Yeah. Right there. The Hollow Man. $3.50. So this is the complete series one and two. Oh, see, that's good. $23.50 and a 20. And how much is it? $3.50. $3.50. I also found these as well. Um, $14.50 and uh, the gel Kayano 22, but the red colorway should do really well. Colorway is really important with these sorts of shoes. Um, condition isn't the worst. I mean, I've seen better, but $14.50. We've had a slow day. We're going to go ahead and pick these up. These are for your store too, by the way. Yeah, and, and the Hokers as well. So that's some, that's some big ones. So we just found these and they've got an $8 price tag on them and they're in very good condition, pair of New Balance running shoes. So, soles, very good, Nick. They should do really well. Like I'm gonna go ahead with those. Like uh, so we just had the one extra pick up there with those New Balance shoes. So what are we up to, five? Well, I think it's about six or seven. So, oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so we're at six or seven different listings now for Courtney. But if we can get you another seven or eight, yep. get up to 15 today, that's gonna be five days worth of listings at least. And we're about to head into a lifeline now, so wish us luck. Having some more luck in the shoe section, we've got these Supernova Plus Adidas running shoes, and they're a size 11, and they're only $12, which is pretty good considering the condition is really, really good. So yeah, I think we'll go with both of those. Not sure on the comps, but they're just a good quality shoe, good brand. Honestly, I know it was a tough day, but the 10 that we got were, I think, 10 really good listings. It was just that we were only able to find 10. We are out there for, well, I think we are out there for about five hours. Yeah. It's not great. And, and that's, just, that's the issue, guys. You, you sometimes have these sorts of days where you spend hours out there and you don't find a hell of a lot. But a breakdown on all of this is we spent, I think it was actually $42 that we spent today for everything. Yeah, okay. So we spent 42 and there's $345 worth of overall value. So like I said, tough day, but still 42 into 345. It's a pretty good result. $34.50 average sale price. Yeah, 10, 10 listings will get you three days, 100%. So three days worth of listings. Better than nothing. Now, I did mention this in the intro, guys, and I'm very excited to talk to you about it because Courtney gained access to a feature that is a huge sales unlock. And ultimately, the reason why she's gained all of her sales is because of this feature. And I'll show you these statistics in a second. 
But what I'm referring to here is the promoted listings feature. Now, basically in complete layman's terms, it's just a few more eyeballs on your listings, a few more impressions that people see your listing to begin with, and then you might get a few more people click on it and ultimately you've got more opportunity for your item to be sold. Now, we're doing this, and so we've activated this for Courtney at a 3% ad rate, and that's something I recommend you guys do. It's not a huge fee, it's just 3% of the item's value that you're ending up having to pay eBay plus the initial fees, so it's about 15% out of pocket if an item sells via promoted listing. Um, but Courtney did that and she's had some pretty crazy results. If I pull the numbers up here for you, you'll see that her, her week was a pretty decent $215 week there. Uh, but then when you click on this little promoted listing sales tab, you can see here that 67% of Courtney's sales were actually promoted listings. So that's an incredible statistic considering she's only just fired this up throughout the week. And as you can see there by the graph, everything in gray was a promoted listing sale. So one particular day, her, almost her best day, um, was all sales by the promoted. So you guys need to be doing this because there is absolutely no way Courtney would have had this many sales if it wasn't for acting that feature uh, and putting that in place. So I thought I'd mention in this video, make sure you're doing it. It is a true, true secret weapon for success. <music> Now, when it comes to writing an eBay title, that's equally, if not more important than the promoted listings, because this is your opportunity to get your item found. You've got 80 characters that eBay gives you, and you should be using all 80 characters of your title wisely. There's a couple of things that I'd like to tell you here to make sure that you are doing, and there's one really big thing that I'd like to say to not do. And the first one is use up all of your 80 characters, put in the incredibly good keywords that can get your item found and ultimately sold and also front end those important keywords. An example that I've got here is stingers. Stingers on DVD, we've got season three here. The way that I would style this uh, title is I would always say the, the title of the TV show first. So stingers would go in first, and then I would say season three, because that's the next most important thing. There's so many seasons of this show out there, but Stinger season three are the two most important. From there, I would also say the keyword DVD. Uh, people are gonna be searching for the word DVD, and they're also gonna be searching for Stingers. They could search Stingers DVD, and that's how this DVD gets found. Uh, the next thing as well with the DVD category is I would put in the region. So the region code for this one is a region four. So that means it plays in Australia. That's very, very important useful information for buyers out there. So it's a good thing to put into your title. So we've got Stingers Season 3 DVD, Region 4. I would also say how many discs are in the set as well. So this one here, it says on the on the label, it says six disc set. Um, so I'd say Region 4, six disc set. Um, you could also say the condition of it as well if you wanted to, uh, depending on how many characters you have left. Um, sometimes, not that I don't think it's a good thing to be doing, but I sometimes do just fill it out with free postage. Uh, although I have heard that that's not a good thing to be doing in your titles. Let me know in the comments if I should be taking that out of my titles. But by the time I've done all of that, it is a complete full allocated listing of 80 characters and there's no capital letters in there either because that is a big no-no if you have capital letters in the entirety. So if we did stingers in capital letters at the start of our title, in the eyes of eBay, that would be a bit of a negative. So we shouldn't be doing that. Just use the capital letter at the start of every word, not the entire word. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Titles are very important though, guys, because literally if you don't style them out the correct way uh, and you're just doing a sell similar of somebody else's incorrectly poorly done title, um, you could be doing it, uh, you could be putting it at a disadvantage for yourself to make a sale. Now, don't get me wrong, good titles, promoted listings, all very much necessary steps to winning on eBay. But if you haven't set up the foundations correctly, you're gonna crumble. You're gonna find it very, very difficult. But luckily, I've got a video for you right here, which was episode one of this series of Courtney starting up a brand new eBay store from scratch. A lot of useful info in that one, guys. If you missed it, go and tune in. And 20,000 subscribers, guys, we're just around the corner. If you're new to the channel, hit the button. It'd be great to get you on board. We'll see you soon.